Let's cross immediately to Keith Still. Now, Professor Still is a visiting professor of crowd science from the University of Suffolk and director uh, at the Crowd Risk Analysis. Now, he joins us from the UK. Professor Still uh, is also an expert in crowd safety and crowd risk analysis. He has more than 30 years of experience consulting on major world events and has developed several leading crowd simulation systems. Uh, Professor Still, uh, when we hear about accidents that involve a large number of people packed into a, a very small space, we often think of a stampede, but this is not what's happened here, is it? It's been described as a crush or a surge. Tell us what's the difference and how does a crush quickly become deadly? Well, a stampede implies that uh, people had space to run. Uh, clearly, we can see from the video footage that there was no space. So what happens in those environments is that the density, the number of people per unit area increases to the point where pressure is completely around you. It's, it's uh, as you can see, the video footage there, these people couldn't move. Now, under those circumstances, uh, the physics is such that any slight movement uh, at the edges can cause the whole crowd to collapse. So this is called a crowd search uh, or a progressive crowd collapse. And unfortunately, under those circumstances, as the crowd falls over, People then try to get up, arms and legs get twisted together. It takes about 30 seconds uh, to cut off the blood supply to the brain. You lose consciousness and then four to six minutes, uh, constrictive or restrictive asphyxia sets in. You literally suffocate. It is horrendous. And these kind of environments are typical of how this uh, situation results in mass fatalities. If we look at the history of accidents and incidents around the world, there's a DNA, uh, you know, a, a characteristic um, that should be known about and, and should be prevented by regulating the number of mm. people in that area. Right. Uh, so it was a bit like uh, the domino effect, which then created a, a situation of suffocation for, for many of the victims, as I hear you explain it. So in this case, uh, we've also heard reports of survivors who managed to leave the scene seemingly well, only to become unwell once they reached home. So is there a possibility of further or delayed injury, perhaps stemming from the incident? Yeah, the flailed chest model, which looks at uh, a pressure on the chest cavity. Uh, there's a paper that we published on this a few years ago. Uh, it mean that, uh, you know, significant serious injury might not be immediate. So uh, I'm not a, a medical expert. I can't uh, testify to the pathology. But uh, I certainly know of the phenomenon that uh, delayed reactions, because if you've lost um, lost oxygen for any length of time, then, of course, uh, all your major organs are, are affected. Uh, again, I'm not a medical expert, uh, but I can testify for, uh, you know, the physics of the crowd collapse. Mm. Well, we've also been hearing reports that um, despite uh, perhaps some knowledge of a high uh, turnout, there were just not enough officers to control the crowding situation. So do you feel that this lack of boots on the ground was the main cause for the tragedy or could other steps have been taken to prevent the incident? Well, in places of public assembly, such as Christmas markets, you, you would normally monitor the amount of people in that environment and uh, and start to regulate the crowd flow. So if it becomes too crowded, uh, you prevent people getting into those spaces. But for that, you need the knowledge of how crowd density and crowd risk evolves in these uh, kind of environments. So it seems to just be a lack of awareness that this is the consequence of too many people and not enough space. Well, I'm, I'm sure that the authorities will be doing some soul searching over the next days and the next weeks as to uh, what could have been done differently. What do you suggest that, that the authorities focus on and uh, to ensure that such events don't happen again? Uh, you mentioned one, uh, the expertise, really. Uh, yes, uh, it, it comes down to education and training, uh, ultimately. I mean, um, I've worked for over 30 years specialising in crowd risk uh, analysis and crowd safety. And for the last 25 years, I've been teaching around the world. And it, it, it always surprises me that people just didn't know that the, the risks existed. Uh, so education and training is the first and, and foremost element. But then just understanding that any finite space has a limited capacity. 
So you've got a, a road uh, which was described by a previous reporter being only four metres wide. Now, we know how many people can fit in that area. We know what the flow rate through that area maximum limits are. I believe there's a railway station near the centre of this area. So all, all of these are known parameters. And you can therefore work out what the safety elements are before you allow the crowds into that space. So that, I think, would be your fundamental analysis understanding the areas, and then look at who's responsible for the safety of the public. Is this local authorities? Uh, who's the landowner in these areas? What are, what are the legislation mm. for uh, public safety within this, mm. this environment? So these are all kind of key questions you would ask in an inquiry. So it sounds like it really is a coordinated effort uh, in these kinds of situations. You know, the, there were many nationalities from around the world um, for our viewers out there who perhaps may find themselves in crowded situations in, in other places. How would you advise them to protect themselves if uh, they are caught in a, a sort of a, a mass crowd situation? Uh, situational, uh, situational awareness is just be aware of your, your environment. And if it feels risky, you know, step back and get out. Uh, I, I think we've all experienced busy places, whether it be a, a Christmas uh, or a, a sales uh, in the shops or a transport system. Uh, if these areas are well managed, then the risks are relatively well managed. But if you feel that there's no authorities around, that there's nobody that's looking after the crowd, then that's the sort of thing that should raise your awareness levels and, and, and consider your own safety first. All right. Thank you for those red flags and, and your earlier analysis, uh, Professor Keith Still from the University of Suffolk and uh, Director at Crowd Risk Analysis.